only does what Emily wants and to hell with the consequences. Don't go near my bag. I don't see her as a proper authority figure. She's just someone that lives in my house. I rolled mum this afternoon, actually, $20. Mum won't notice, because she's a bit of a fool. You send this beautiful little kid off to high school, and then one day this horrible little girl comes back. Give me your money. That looks like your daughter, but she's not. She's been possessed by something. Once I turned 13, it sort of got bad because mum started taking up a job. She was away a lot. I started being able to do whatever I wanted. I can't enforce anything because I'm not here. I'll tell you to get fucked. She tells me I'm a horrible mother. She knows I feel bad because I can't always be here for them. When mum's at work, I get my friends over and we play drinking games. She had a party here one night when I was working overnight. Which got really out of hand and there were like seven police cars called. He is a good guy. In the year 10 school book, I was voted the um, biggest smart ass and also the biggest party animal. It's not, it's not good enough. And mum was like, are you happy? Are you proud of yourself? And I was like, yes, I am. That's really good. I was really excited by that. Uh, 16 year old Harry from Perth may look like a nice kid, but his explosive temper is threatening to tear his family apart. All right. You can write a few letters if you feel like it, you know? I'm not gonna write, no, I'm not going to have time. Yeah? I'm not going to have time to write any letters, and I'm, not, I'm not, probably not going to call you either. On a physical level, I'm very desperate because I feel very stressed every day, and I come to the point sometimes where I say either you've got to leave or I've got to leave because we're not, this isn't really working out as a family. If they make me do something that I don't want to do, I'll stand up for myself and I won't take it. He steals, he lies, he swears. Breaks the property up, puts holes in doors, pulls fences, gates off of their hinges. Yeah, this is where I punched it here. It's got a very short fuse. It's mum that makes me the angriest out of any, anyone at all. No, because you manipulate. Say yes. He scares me sometimes. He'll front up to me. What? It, no. It's gonna be what? No, no. It's no. gonna be what? Oh. I never really know who's in control in this house because Harry's constantly trying to be in control. Why do you always try and dominate me? If he needs something, he'll do whatever he can to get it. And if it means somebody else's possession or money or a credit card, then he'll do that. Here we go! At parties, if I'd see an odd phone or iPod laying around, you know, I'd pick it up and, you know, just pocket it, I guess. I paid for that phone. That phone's mine. I've had about 18 phones. He sold his computer to buy six pairs of shoes. I did have two laptops. But I sold the first one because I wanted to get a better one. And then I got a better one, then I sold that one, and I don't know where that money's gone. He's always wanting more and more instead of caring for people. Bye, Mum. In 24 hours, our teenagers will have their whole world turned upside down. No, come on. Ah! We'll go, I bye. Want you. bye. Yeah. I'm trying to hug and kiss you, I just palmed her in the face. <laughs> Harry and Emily are being sent to County Cork in Ireland. They'll have to fit in with a traditional family big on old Catholic values. We're strict for their own safety, we're strict for their own health reasons, we're strict because we love them. The rules are quite straightforward. The Ten Commandments. My dear brothers and sisters, let us ask our Lord Jesus Christ. Dad John runs a building company, while Mum Mary is a special needs teacher with a degree in teen psychology. They have five kids: Riona, Bavine, Myrene, Barry, and Evelyn. All of our children help to run the household. It's very important that they learn from a young age that you don't get anything for nothing. These are okay. There's no artificial colouring. The two youngest Coleman's have been doing the weekly shop unsupervised since they were 11. 
We try to get as much fruit and vegetables as we can and healthy food, really. We don't need a lot of things to be happy in life to get by. It's not necessary to have four shades of the one shoe or five shades of the one T-shirt. You can't use bad language in our house. It's not allowed. Oh. Once, I just said, damn it, damn it, damn it. Anyway, my parents got so angry with me and they said, you have to go outside and eat your dinner with the dogs because you're speaking like an animal. I was mortified, but I learned a lesson. John and Mary control what their kids download. Weeknight TV is banned. And mobile phones must be handed in every night. It's a bit intrusive into your real life if you're always and ever on the phone. For Harry and Emily, it's going to be a crash course in old school discipline. There is no such thing as a bad child. You need rules, you need guidelines. You have to be strict in order to love your children properly. When we went through duty free in the airport, Harry bought some Irish cream so we could get into the spirit of things. I reckon for this family to try and change me, they're going to have to try pretty fucking hard. So, basically, good, good, good luck. Good luck. Yep, this pair plan on pushing the boundaries every chance they get. Right, I've got to hide my smokes again, because I've got them out to have a smoke before. Wipe that down your pants. Are you sure? Yeah. They're not going to frisk you. No, Emily, they're not going to frisk you. Not unless you break the house rules, that is. Hello, Harry. Hi, Harry. Hi. Hi, I'm John. You're very welcome. Um, hi, hi, Emily. Emily. Hi. Delighted to meet you. Yes. Let us introduce you to our children. This is Evelyn. Hi. hi. Hello. Hello. Nice to meet you, Emily. Nice to meet you. And Harry, yeah. And Barry. Barry, yeah. Hi. Yeah. And Riona. Riona. And Bevin. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. And Maureen. Yep. Welcome to our house. <laughs> Thank you. Go on, Ed. We're going to treat you the very, very same as our own children. Um, we have rules, uh, rules which we've agreed with our own children and they've no problem with it. Um, we don't drink, uh, we don't smoke. We don't curse or swear or use bad language. And we're fairly strict about that. No going out during the week socially at night because the school in the morning. So, all those rules I think are grand. Right now, our teenagers see those rules as a challenge. Look at this. And Harry has more alcohol hidden in his room. I, I feel yeah. they're very good teenagers. Yeah. But then again, John, they're only here days. an hour. That's right. Yeah, and they haven't done any, um, they haven't really experienced yeah. family life yet. Yeah, I think it's sort of hard to just, I don't know, follow this family's rules when I've been following my own family's rules for 17 years. The kitchen must be cleaned at a higher standard and be complete by 8 p.m. Five euro reduction from allowance when not up to the mark per mum and dad. So they would actually take five euro off you. Mm -hmm. That sucks. Five euro, I think, is like 10 Australian dollars. I don't know, but if my mum tried to take 10 bucks off me, I'd be like, piss off. I hope the Australian teenagers know what they're in for. I think they'll get a bit of a shock at the start, uh, but hopefully by the end of the week, they'll adapt. Thanks be to God, this rain has nearly stopped. Can I ride a nice one? So this week, the horses will play a big part in Emily and Harry's routine. <laughs> okay. okay, one, two, three. Since Evelyn has been six years of age, she has come out horse riding with me on a regular basis and it allows us to have a one-to-one -one chat with them, you know, and you really get to understand your child and know more about them and understand what issues they're, they're having. Sit up straight now, Emily, put your shoulders back. I thought we were going to actually ride today, but no, we're just going around in circles on a little horse. What do I... Dad, tuck up, Bob. Horse made me look like an idiot. Yeah. Hey, I'd like to see you out there, mate. Okay, fine. I did years of horse riding. Oh well, good to you. Don't kick oh, shit at me. Like literally, don't kick shit at me. No, we don't say it more than so if you don't mind. The cursing started to become an issue. And what I really find most worrying about it is that it's just so deeply ingrained into our everyday language. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> 
Like, it was an accident, I didn't mean to. And I did literally mean shit, but I accidentally said it. <laughs> ah! Fuck! Oh my god, that scared the shit out of me. I'm gonna pretend I didn't hear that. Day two in Ireland, and one of our Aussie teens is heading for a showdown with her new strict parents. Emily, you right? Did you remove that pier, those two piercings? Yeah, would you do that so, please? Emily is wearing some body piercings. She'll have to take them out before she goes to school. Otherwise, there will be problems. I'm not taking them out. Like, sorry. yeah, but you also said that you'd try it our way for the week. So if yes, I was in that position, I would just take them out. Oh. So that's what you're going to do. <laughs> I don't like her anymore. So if we believe with you, Harry, about 10 minutes. So if you can finish getting dressed and um, you might dress your bed as well, please. Uh, I never make my bed at home. I hate making my bed. There's no point. I'm also not going to wear the black shoes. I'm just going to wear the white ones. Slip out the two body piercings. I want to talk to the principal. <clears throat> no, first. no, it does not talk to the principal. The principal, I don't wanna, in this I don't instance. Take them out. Emily, what do you do? Or what do you don't like? Okay, please take them out now because I must go to work as well. I never said I would take it out. It's. it's... I didn't say anything. I didn't agree to anything. <clears throat> Emily, for you and I to get on, you need to understand a small thing about discipline, okay? Is that what we say goes. I need you to slip out the body piercing, give it to me. But if I just wear the plaster over <clears> it, then it's not an issue. I mean, if you just knew how hideous it looks. Well, okay. I'm the one that has to wear it. Why are you arguing, Emily? It because I don't want to take it out. Not acceptable. You're not leaving here with a body piercing. Clearly, Emily is not used to being told what to do and when to do it. And these are little issues that she needs to get over. That looks horrendous. It's disgusting. Take out the whole lot, no, please. I'm not taking it out. Ma Emily, these are not your decisions. Yeah. They are my decisions. No, I have to wear them in my face. None of the people from our house will wear things like that going to school. It hurts us to have you represent our family wearing something like that going to school. It's staying in. Take it out, OK? And my sister's a beautician, OK? And um, if, if it needs to be re-pierced, I'll make you a present of it, OK? A compromise gets Emily over the line. It looks worse with just the hole. That's OK. No, it's not. But she's not happy. I'm definitely going to be more of a bitch now because she's trying to be really nice and they were just a dick to me, so I'm just going to do it back. I don't care now. It's made me realise why I don't follow rules. Hey there, Mr. Hearn. This is Emily. Hi, Emily. How are you? Good, Welcome thank to you. Hi. That's it, there. And that means more rules. To give full attention and cooperation to each teacher during class. To refrain from anything which interrupts the teacher or disrupts the class in any way. To refrain from leaving college premises during school hours without the express permission of the college authorities. What's your rule about um, mobile phones? Basically, we let people have their mobile phones, Harry, but you put it into your bag and you turn it off. Emily and Harry are signing a contract that says they will obey the rules. Whether they break that contract remains to be seen. If I was a gambling man, well, I'd clean up. Before you go in, you have to change the shoes. Okay, I've asked her already. Okay, all right, well. Fucking bullshit. Okay, so we have two white squares, which should be called. <laughs> Harry, Harry, take those shoes <laughs> out. Can I just have one in? Nope. So put it put it into your pocket. Switch it off and put it into your pocket. So there's some questions here. Harry, if you put your feet on, please. We should take my phone away if I use it again. I really wanted to see what I would get away with at this new school. I do that at every school I've been to.
Just ring me tomorrow if he does one thing out of the way. Right. Just give me a ring and I'll be okay. in here for him straight away. Good right, stuff. Sorry right. again about that. We're fine together. I was really disappointed that he couldn't keep his word for a few hours. Did he think that he was above everybody else to be kind of condescending and, and, and annoying people around him, his peers and his teachers? Harry, could you come here a minute, please? Yeah. <coughs> Firstly, you had a mobile phone in school, in use. You took off your black school shoes and put on a pair of runners in school, not allowed. And thirdly, you were cheeky and insolent to the teachers, which is not allowed. Did you read the code of behavior? Yeah. Look up at me now and then. Yeah. What I can't understand is why you would deliberately disrespect the teachers. Within them. hours of the code of behavior being read in front of you. We want your runners and I want your phone. Okay, but above all, I want your absolute word and your absolute trust. As a young man, face to face with another man. That we won't have a repeat performance. Yes. Harry will be shoveling a lot of horse poo before he sees bed tonight. I don't think it's a fair punishment having to clean shit out of a horse stable. It's kind of a bit harsh. <laughs> I was going to grab my gloves. You don't need them, Harry. You'll be fine without them. Walk a bit quicker, OK? Come on, we'll be here after that. You'd think that'd be enough to teach any teenager a lesson. No such luck. There's more bad behaviour to come. It's fucking disgusting. <laughs> Early morning in Ireland and 16-year-old Emily's already been up before school to go horse riding with Evelyn. She was marvellous altogether. It's amazing. I've never met anybody... ..who's able to pick it up so quick. Yeah. Not bad for a teenager who dropped out of school and normally sleeps till lunchtime. Emily would have to teach her to tie a tiger. I can master a horse, but I'm yet to master the tire. I can see with Emily that her priorities are changing. Body piercings. I didn't hear about body piercings. These have gone down in Emily's priority list. Horse riding, being involved actively uh, with the horses has come so much up. As for Harry, he won't be changed in a hurry. School, it's gonna be fucking terrible. First chance we get to wag a wheel. And Mary's not prepared to trust either teenager just yet. Maybe you're... Planning up something for some smuggling drugs. Hmm? You don't seem to have anything funny. We're okay, uh, Emily. Thank you. Harry! Yeah. What are they doing in here? What? Please. Oh, uh, um. It's ridiculous. I was just going to to let you go into school and not check your bag because I was building up trust in you again. Don't do anything. That would upset anyone. Promise me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What was the most important thing you learned this morning? Turns out that promise didn't mean much. Harry barely makes it to morning tea, and he's out the school gates already. I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, I don't know what's in this town. Um, I'll probably do whatever. You know, I don't really care as long as I'm out of school. That school. How fucking stupid do these look? <laughs> oh my god. I've just received a phone call from the principal to say that Harry left the school building. He's my responsibility and I don't know, what if I can't find him at all? It's just ridiculous, really. It's ridiculous. 
I, I'm looking for a 15-year-old boy, blonde hair, green uniform, St. Aidan's. See where the van came down? Oh, yeah? And he went up that way, did he? Isn't he very deceitful, lads? I'm going to give him a fine lecture when he comes back. Uh, I don't really care for the court. What's the worst I can do? I don't know. He could be smoking or drinking or doing something totally illegal. I don't know what he's doing. Stop, Harry. Where were you? Where were you? I'm sick, worried, looking for you, driving up and down the streets, looking for you around here. I didn't want to be there. It was Why not? Because it was a shit. I'm horrified and disgusted with you. Get into the Jeep and we'll go home and I'll have to give you a good talking to. Would your mum be proud of you now, this moment, if she heard what happened? I don't know, she'd probably just feel disappointed. He'll have to deal with more than just disappointment with these parents. Now you go into your room and you stay there. You're the most devious young fella I ever came across. Fuck off. Harry's been ordered to his room for the entire night. But if that wasn't enough, Mary's just discovered the bottle of wine Emily stashed under the mattress. Emily? Yes. Come here. Hi. What's this about? All that trust that Emily built up may have just been undone. It's ridiculous. You know there's rules in this country about alcohol. I want you to take it out to the sink and empty it down the sink, please. I don't want that in my house. That's a real breach of trust. And it's not like I was drinking it, like it's so it doesn't matter, like I haven't been drinking it. Why were you hiding it then? Because I didn't want you to do this and pour it down the drain. Well, I want you to learn from this week and, and learn that you don't need crutches like this to keep you going, love. I never said I did. Why are you bothering me? You're with acting it? like I'm some like sneaky alcoholic that I've been like drinking every night. Well, it looks very like that when it's stick, stick, stuck in there under the mattress. Because oh, I didn't want you to pour it out like you're going to now. Emily had been building trust with the family, but now. She might have blown it. It is ridiculous, this trickery and conceitedness and, and lack of respect for us. I'm just shocked and I'm disgusted. I hadn't drank any of it yet. Like, I brought alcohol into the house, but I had it before I came here and like, I hadn't drank any of it yet or anything, so I hadn't really like, betrayed her trust. They're making like, a massive thing out of it and I haven't even done anything wrong yet. I just had the bottle of wine. It doesn't mean like, I was drinking it. So, I don't know. I really just want to have a shower and just think. Thank you. Harry's been doing plenty of thinking too. After wagging school, he spent the afternoon confined to his room. We've asked Harry to stay in his room and uh, we'll talk to him later on tonight. We'll have dinner. He can have his dinner in his room on his own. Let him have a bit of time to reflect. It is disappointing when you treat somebody like an adult and they keep going back behaving like a child. John isn't the only one ready to see a change in Harry. His mum, Julie, has written him a letter. Whoa. It's long. Hi, Harry. How art thou, our dearest Harry? How art thou, our dearest Harry? It seems like ages since you left. We hope you learn a lot and enjoy your time abroad in Ireland. Dad and I want for nothing more than for you to be happy, to truly achieve what it is you want from life, Harry, and you want a lot. You do have to be able to knuckle down and do the hard work. The ball is now in your court and time is running out. I realise I was not the greatest of mums. Maybe I hurt you, and maybe if so, I'm sorry. We have always loved you, never stopped loving you ever. You know, honey, when you are angry and throw things and push and shove me. It really breaks my heart, and I wish you wouldn't ever do it again. 
We do not miss the anger or arguments or aggressive energy between us. We are hopeful we will get on better when you come home. Safe passage home, the son of mine, love mom, and of course dad, P.S. be good, and good will come to you. See you soon, my hazard kid. I don't think of myself as a horrible person, but I think my aspect on other people, I can be really cruel. I'd like to become a really decent guy. Um, you know, a genuinely nice person towards everyone. Right now, I'm, I know I'm very far from that, but I know that I have the potential to be. I just need to focus on, focus on that. Harry has all night to think about his attitude, but John and Mary still have Emily to deal with. Was it full or was it empty? Half full, less than half full. She said she drank it on the way over here and that she hid it under the mattress because she was afraid that we'd think she was, you know, a bad kid. Give her the benefit of the doubt? Yeah. I'm inclined to think that she's telling the truth, that she did drink it on the way over here and didn't drink it while she was here. Let's give her the benefit of the doubt. If you've asked her about it, if, if she said that is the case, well, then yeah. we believe her. Yeah. Lately, about Emily, I just feel so kind of protective about her. Like, I just feel like it's the same way that I feel about my own sisters. I don't want her to do anything bad for her own sake because it's not going to benefit her. I really do believe her when she tells me that like she wasn't drinking here and I don't know. And I just want her to make good decisions herself. Evelyn, you're not the only one who wants that for Emily. Her real mum does too. Hi baby girl. I know a lot of people will be asking themselves what kind of a mother would send their child to the other side of the world to live with people neither of them know. All I can say is a desperate one. I hope that the family you're staying with get the opportunity to meet the real Emily. They will see she is full of life and not full of herself. <sighs> they will see her beautiful face and not and not the one that <laughs> They will see her beautiful face and not one that has been scarred by one piercing after another. I know over the years I have failed you. I know on many over the levels. years I have failed you on many levels. <sighs> I know this because you're always telling me. Every time you tell me you hate me or that you would be better off without me, it hurts. <laughs> hurts I and I, I die inside die. a little bit more with each and every word. I've never pretended to be the best mother. I've just tried to do the best I can with what I have. And hoped and prayed to God that it would be enough to get you through life safely. You have style, grace, looks and brains. It's a great combination. And so please stop wasting it. Remember the world is your oyster and you truly are the gem inside. Oh my goodness, <laughs> Mother Bear. Oh, that's so, so hard, Frederick. <laughs> I love you. Oh, gee, she sounds so nice. Yeah. <laughs> I never knew she felt this strongly. And it's like, it's really hard to hear your mum talk like that. It takes something like this to make you realise what you're like at home and like how wrong that is. It's like a massive eye opener. So, you know, Come you go. maybe like take that attitude back home. Emily's already on the path to change. All she has to do now is keep it up. Saturday. And in the Coleman House, that means time to get to work. Everyone has a job to do, including our Aussie teenagers. 
Harry really knuckled down and happily mowed the lawn today and he did it uh, without a break and he did it willingly and didn't stop until the job was finished. So that is definitely progress from, from Harry's point of view. I think that I have been pretty devious, but um, I won't be hiding anything from anyone anymore. I think actually Harry is quite good at physical work. He was very good at cleaning out the horse stables. He seemed to be very good at cutting the grass. So physical work is no enemy of his. And you won't get any complaints from Emily either. He's so fat. Yeah, <laughs> just big boned. <laughs> Her job is to help Evelyn with the horses. I do kind of think that the way I've been like bonding with the horses and getting better at horse riding and everything like that has sort of been the same as like how I've been with the family. <laughs> Give me a hug. Give me a hug. Oh. Me and Evelyn, like, we've learned to trust each other and like now we're just really close and you know we have a lot of fun and I really value our relationship. That's it. <coughs> and we're up. Alright. So what do you think it'll be like when you go back? Back home? Yeah. Uh, I don't know, I couldn't tell you. I think it'll be hard when I get back home because sort of like in a routine here. <laughs> yeah. But um, I think yeah, it'll be Yeah, you into a routine kind of quick here. Yeah, like it's just early. waking up early and going to bed early. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's like bittersweet. Like I want to see my family, but I want to stay here, so. You'll just you have to come back and visit? Some. I will, I promise to come back and visit or to Pinky make you promise. Guys. Or you can come visit me. That's another pinky problem. In Sydney. The biggest change I've seen in Emily would be her attitude. Throughout this week, she's become like a, a, my fourth sister, and that I just only want good things for her in the future, and I know that she's well able and well capable. And uh, I think I'll really miss her, and that um, I hope we stay in contact in the future. I hope that she remembers me, because <laughs> I'll always remember her. You okay back there? Yeah. <laughs> the seven day stay with our strict parents is about over. And today, our Aussie teenagers will begin their long trip home. I know I'm gonna forget something. I'm really glad with the person I am now and so hopefully I can take that back home with me and sort of be more determined and can do things without whinging because I tend to whinge a lot. So I want to be a Coleman kid, but back in Sydney. <laughs> what I've learned from the kids and how they treat their parents here is that even the little things that I think I'll take home. Lately I have been taking a lot of advantage of my parents, especially over the past year. That's something I really like to change. I think it was great to get the opportunity to have them see a different type of lifestyle, a different type of parenting. It may not have immediate results, but maybe down the road they may feel that, yes, there are other ways of living, there are other ways of um, communicating with people that work. See you, Alfie. Yeah, this is a present from Hospital 14. It's only something small. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> and you have to wear them. Yeah. Wear them. <laughs> Do I look fantastic? You yeah. too, actually. Thank we you. must just puff it up on top now to make it the full height. Okay. Now you're not five foot four anymore. You're six foot four. Top of the morning to you. Top of the morning to you. <laughs> That's your Irish Thank hat. You. It's symbolic. And you know what? <laughs> Whenever you, you're kind of cross and you're kind of angry with mom, put on your Irish hat and say, look at a lovely person I was when I was in Ireland. Best <laughs> to look, Emily. And we love you. Thank you. <laughs> See you, Emily. See ya. It's been such a pleasure having you. You're wonderful. <laughs> Emily you. has blossomed out of recognition <laughs> from the young lady that, that walked in the front door just one short week ago. For us as parents, it is very rewarding to see that, that we can have such an influence. She's, she's a super girl. Oh. <laughs>
Yeah. See you, Mary. You're a member of your, your mum for a week, will you? Yeah. Always look after the inside. It's just as important or more important than the outside. Okay. Good man, Harry. Have a good life. Thank you. Okay. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for everything. You're so welcome, Harry. Bye, Harry. Mm -hmm. I feel that Harry is quite young for his age and I feel he has the potential to improve and probably in the next 12 months he'll change a lot. I think it's, it was a privilege for us to get to know Harry. We're gonna miss you. Get the onions, get the onions. Okay, okay. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Have a See good night, okay? Stay Thank home. you. We love you. I always will. I love you too. <laughs> Bye. See ya. Tomorrow, Emily and Harry will go back to their old lives. I don't want to go. Hopefully, with a new attitude. Bye. 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 After a week of strict parenting and discipline in Ireland, 16 year old Harry is back in Perth and almost home to his own family. I can't imagine that going to the other side of the world and back again, that there isn't some kind of seed of change within a 16-year-old. There must be something there that will take him forward for the rest of his life. As soon as we get back, I think I wanted to show them that like, my respect for them is higher and my, my attitude is a lot more, you know, it's just better, I guess. I didn't expect it at first. I thought nothing was going to come out of this experience. Hi! Hi! Hi, Hi. 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 <laughs> Hi. The family was lovely. Yeah. They were just, yeah. and they weren't usually angry. They were never angry, so they never shouted or sweared or any of that. They were just more disappointed, yes. which in a way is worse, but yes. it doesn't cause any more conflict. That gets you to, to reflect on yourself. It, it does. It didn't make me fire up and get all angry and swear and everything. I think he's also learned what it is to work more of as a team member within a family. and. And that's something that hopefully he can bring into this, fa his family here. Only time will tell. The door will be home. I hope she thought about us. I hope she thinks about her sisters, her little sister. Hopefully she's thought more about how her actions affect not only her, but her sister as well. I'm actually really excited to get home. Like, I didn't think I was going to miss my family as much as I did, but I really want things between me and Mum to be, you know, less yelling, more talking. It's nice to see you got dressed up for me. <laughs> <laughs> they were fantastic. They were like the greatest family. They were so good. Oh yeah, my piercings. They're out, can you see? Yeah, I knew something went right. Very good. All out. Good. I put up a fight, but then I decided that I didn't want them because I have changed. Oh, good. <laughs> so what kind of things did you learn about how you should treat your mum? I don't know. They sort of show me that, I don't know, that they are your parents and they are, they're not just your parents, they're people too. So yeah. they were, like, they were really good at making me realise, like, that it's not your God-given right exactly. to have things. You exactly, just, yeah. and that I should, I don't know, appreciate what I do have, not whinge and fight with you about what I don't have. She seems so 
full of life. I haven't seen her so excited over just life for so many years. Oh, I'm stoked. I'm just wondering if I can send the other two so I can appreciate them gone and coming back as well. But she just, she looks happy. She sounds like she's had a ball. No matter how long this lasts, whether it's forever or just for a few hours, it's just beautiful to see her like that.